What's up, it's your boy Mello One, White Labor Radio. We with the legend, DJ Premier. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I appreciate you sitting down with us. Oh, classic hip hop. Our show is yeah. classic hip hop from the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. So right. we try to, you know, educate the new cats yeah. about the stories. And I'm, I'm not an energy guy, so I, I tell it from the perspective of the cat that was in the front row of Wu Tang concert for oh, okay. the first time or whatever. No you know? And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a die hard hip hop fan. So, we're in the same family. Exactly, exactly. So um, we do past, present, and future. So what we do right now is um, like Gangstar. Gangstar, you see my shirt, sis? Oh, yeah, listen, yeah. Listen, listen to I Gangstar. I saw that online. Hey, y'all got to give us a cut on that, man. We'll you know? <laughs> 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 rock with you, but you got to give us a little of that. Hey, hear that. Yeah, hear that. Yeah, 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 that. We'll he's, give you a little taste. Okay, okay. You come through me. Yeah, right? Come, come through the band or whatever. Yeah. We'll definitely set that up. We'll definitely set that up. So. Yeah. Nice so, shirt though. So, Gangstar, like, yeah. you from originally from Texas, right? Yes. And then you moved to New York. So, to New York, yes. How did you work up with uh, Guru? I met Guru through a mutual, okay, a mutual friend of mine that I used to work at a record store with, who actually got me at the time. It was Carlos Garza. Big up to him always, and we're still boys. We run together. Um, he was a Billboard reporter when they just started to have hip hop, uh, a rap list of, uh, of top 10 album on Billboard. Yeah. So we had a rap chart that just came in around 1986, maybe, uh -huh. yeah, around that time, 87. So I worked at the store being the 12 inch buyer for all the 12 inches that they wanted then. So, like, if I remember when Melly the Melly came out with Girl, you know it's true. You want that? We tell them, but well, I'm the 12 inch buyer for the store. Okay. So I might say, hey, give me 100 of those. And they'll go, are you sure? And I'll be like, yeah, they're going to they're gonna pop off. This record's going to be big. So how many Melly 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 and uh, Carlos was reporting to all the independent labels that were reporting their records to get put on the charts for uh -huh. Billboard, Billboard rap charts. He talked to Wild and Stu Fine and Wild Bitch, who was the owner, and uh, he told him about me. And said, yo, I got this guy who's dope that works at the record store, he goes to college, and he eat up the hill, his party's nice and the wheels, dope, next door, next stage. And he was like, he, uh, you gotta hear the demo. He said, yo, send it to me. He sent him the demo. Guru was the one that was going through all the demos that came into the office with the husband and wife business uh -huh. when they were a small company. So from there, uh, Guru heard my 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 uh, demo and he heard Law Finesse demo. That's how Law Finesse also got signed as our label mate. Right. That's how I ended up producing Law Finesse. It was the first artist I ever produced outside of Gangsta. Oh wow. So we go way, 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 way back. Man, they so know that. Guru heard my demo, liked it. But I was in a group called MCs in Control, and then we changed it to the ICP, which was the Inner Circle Posse, but there was a reggae group with the same name. I was still in college at the time, but I was going back and forth to New York to see my grandfather, and then a, a friend of mine who went to college with us the following year let us move with his family, and all we had jobs and stuff like that. And we came home with him. We stayed out of the house during the work, certain part of the day, and we got to move and stayed in the basement. We, I danced with gang stars, everybody. So it was a uh, uh, packed house and through all of that is how um, they heard my demo but they didn't like my MC. So they were like, yo, we want to work with you and we want you to do some gang star, but we don't want the MC that you're with. But I didn't want to abandon my partner because we were on a mission to get out of here. They just didn't happen as time passed. We kept doing other versions of our song in a real studio so we could get it better. Just to convince them to sign us as a group. Still didn't do it. He, you know, finally just gave, gave, gave up the the, the waiting time, which we put a lot of time in together and went to school together. And uh, from there, he went to the military. So once he enlisted for four years, I wasn't going to wait four years until he got back. You know, if it was a year, I probably would wait. You know, a year, I could still get out. But four years, I was like, now I'm home. So from there, yeah, so from there we, um, we, I, I let them know that that was my situation. They knew both situations anyway, but once he, he went to the military, like we still want you to still join the group. So I said, all right. But I didn't officially sign with the group until uh, we did our first single because Gangstar already existed before. So what was the very first single? The very first single that we did was Words on Manifest. Nice. Yeah. And that was the first one I seen on your T raps and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, and me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's how it all came together. We when we met, I went out to, to a Cool G rap concert and I met him there. 
was at a clay, place called The World. And you know, that middle man. In New York. Was, yeah, I was in New York at the time for the summer and we kicked in in May. And so we already started vibing, called each other on the phone, and I started sending them tracks. And Manifest was one of the tracks I found, like five or six tracks I sent him. So he wrote a rhyme to that and wrote verses to it, did it over the phone. And I said, when we get back, we'll record it. So we recorded it when it took off. On the show DJ for playing it. So for us to hear Molly Wall and Red Alert and Chuck Chill out and all them playing it, awesome too. That's a big deal in New York, especially yeah. me being an up and coming from Texas. So like right then I was like, okay. That shows you you arrived once, once, yeah, once yeah. they get. And then, the and then seeing uh, uh, you know, EPMD at a club or seeing uh, Rock Kim or Carol's one, they're like, yo, gangsta, yo, I like your music. You're like, Hey, you like, yeah, me? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's all you wanted. Yeah. You know, if you got that, then you knew that the, the rest would fall through. And it did. It did exactly the way we envisioned it from that point. Nice. And every record I sold the next, it got better and better yeah. and better. And then we were able to open up the Gangstar Foundation and the team grew on. And Jerry Wood Damage and Big Sugar got to expand. And they all have careers and are still working and doing their thing.